Hey there, my name is Angela. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to make this whip transition when filming yourself. When I wear my colored glasses, the sun comes shining through. When wearing my rose colored glasses, the world looks shiny and new. That clip is from last week's video, which I had a lot of fun making. If you want to watch the video in full, you can do so by tapping that link right there. But in the meantime, let me show you how I filmed this using my gimbal, which is a DJI RS3, and how I did my edits in Premiere Pro. Step one is to choose a song. I like to choose the song before I go and capture anything. That way I can note when the transitions are supposed to happen and how much time is supposed to happen between each transition. You can do this by dropping your song into Premiere Pro and then selecting it on the timeline. And as it plays, press the M key every time you want a transition to happen. This will make markers, and then you can look at the timestamps of those markers and see how far apart they are. Step two is to get your gear situated. So balance your gimbal and set up your camera. Personally, I shoot with a Canon R5C, and one of the worst features that I've noticed about it so far is that I cannot connect to my gimbal via Bluetooth unless I buy an additional $1,000 attachment. So, that combined with the fact that I haven't really played around with connecting my camera to my gimbal via wire either, since I've only had my gimbal for a little bit, means that during this entire process, the camera and the gimbal will not be communicating to each other. Step three is to open the DJI Ronin app on your phone and to use the track feature to create waypoints. When you open up the DJI app, you're gonna press create and then track. Then you would adjust your camera to face wherever you want the first point to face. For clip one, the first waypoint will be in a forward orientation, so I can just press the plus sign to create the waypoint and then adjust the stay time based on the numbers that I found in step one. Something to know, you should give yourself an extra second or two so that way you have time to start the track and then hide your phone since you'll be filming yourself. Now we're going to tap the one so that it will be grayed out and then adjust our camera's position for waypoint two. For waypoint two in clip one, we'll have the camera go all the way to the right. Once the camera is in position, you'll hit the plus sign and you'll see a two pop up. Tap the two and then adjust the movement duration to one second so that it is as quick as it can be. And then the stay time doesn't really matter, to be honest, because that will be the end of the clip. Next, you can press the red button and the track will begin. This is what the track looked like in clip one. Well, clip one will have two waypoints, one as a static and one as a motion. Every middle clip will have three. Waypoint one will be to continue the motion of the previous clip. Waypoint 2 will be your static shot, and then waypoint 3 will be a motion out of the clip. A tip to remember to keep your motion direction consistent is that waypoint 1 will always be the opposite of whatever the last waypoint was for your previous clip. So if your last clip ended with the camera pointed all the way to the right, then your next clip will start with the camera pointed all the way to the left. And if your previous clip started with your camera pointing downward, then your next clip will start with the camera pointing upward. Once you have all your clips, we'll take them into Premiere Pro, which is where the magic really happens. For step four, we're going to put our clips on our timeline. To do this, you want to select your clip and then make an in point and an out point for the start of the clip and the end of it. Make sure that any in points or out points that are going to be part of the whip transition are on a frame that is slightly blurry like this one. So now I have all my clips on my timeline, but you can see that the transition isn't really smooth yet. So now, in step five, I'm going to add a speed ramp. To add a speed ramp, I'm going to select the row that the videos are in and make it taller. 
and so I can see this line here and the video like that. Now I'm gonna right click a clip and then go to show clip keyframes, go to time remapping, speed. And what this does, rather than having the clip be cut and then speeding up part of it, you can instead add keyframes so that way the speed gradually gets faster instead. So I'm going to have a keyframe right when it starts to move. And then I'm going to increase the speed from there. Let's say to like 300. And then I'm gonna click this little gray part right here and drag it to create a sort of ramp. And let me just extend this out now. Let me click and drag a little bit more. And now you can see it gradually gets faster. And then I'm gonna do the same for this clip. And since I sped this clip up right here, it got a little bit shorter. So I'm just going to pull it out to extend it. And then I'm gonna do a speed ramp like this between each transition. For step six, what I'm gonna do is add a cross dissolve between each transition now. So we can go up to effects look for dissolve and then there's cross dissolve and it's kind of it's kind of lingering too much so i'm going to make it a little shorter now before i move on to step seven i'm going to color grade these really quick so now that these are color graded what i'm going to do is also put a cross dissolve between each adjustment layer that holds its color grading so that way not only the clips blend together but the colors of the clips blend together as well for step seven i am going to add a directional blur to try to make this even smoother and to do that what you'll do is you'll go into the project panel create an adjustment layer i have some made we'll just pop it on top of the transition and then i'm going to go into the effects panel and I'm gonna look up blur. And you can see directional blur. So go ahead and click that, drag it onto your adjustment layer, go into effect controls. Let's increase the blur length. And then we'll make it, since it's going sideways to the right, we'll make it 90 degrees. And this is how it looks. And that looks pretty dang good. So we're gonna add some directional blur by just copying and pasting onto our next one as well. Cool. And then I'm gonna copy it onto the next one as well. For the last transition, because it goes from up to down, we're gonna copy and paste the directional blur, but then change it to 180. And I'm actually going to increase the blur length on this one. And let's actually increase the blur length here too. Now that I have the directional blur on each of the transitions, there is one more step, which is to add a sound effect. So I'm going to use this whoosh transition that I got off of Epidemic Sound. So when I add the sound effect, I'm not just going to drop it in and call it a day. Instead, I'm going to drop it in and then speed it up or slow it down based on the transition length. So if you watch this right here, that one actually looks pretty good. So let me just copy that whoosh and then go over here to the next one. So for this transition, I kind of want the whoosh to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to use the rate stretch tool to just grab it and pull it to be longer. Cool. And I'm going to do that for the last clip as well, just a little bit. Nice. I'm just going to select all of them and I'm actually going to drop the gain by let's say seven decibels 
just a random number I chose <laughs> but I just want the sound effect to be more subtle and less in your face and not take away from the music. I just want it to immerse the viewer into the transition, you know? Now let's see what it looks like now that it's done. When I wear my colored glasses, the sun comes shining through. I'm wearing my rose colored glasses. And with that, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And until next time, bye.